Good morning and welcome to Morning Moments. Today I have from Jason Runnels Ministries, a singer, songwriter, and evangelist, Jason Runnels himself. Welcome, Jason, to Morning Moments. Man, Andy, thank you so much for having me. I am a I'm pumped. I've been looking forward to this. Great. Yes. I've been looking forward to this interview as well. Well, Jason, let me ask you the question. What do you do and why do you do it? Well, uh, the what I do is uh, my wife and I live on an RV. We travel full time all over the United States. Uh, we've covered in the last eight years that I've had my solo ministry, we've covered uh, 47 states and several provinces of Canada. Uh, I travel, I sing. Uh, I was ordained to preach back in 2019. So I've been doing a lot of preaching as well, but uh, I just I just travel and minister. When he created me, Andy, it was to do what I'm doing and it was to share the good news of Christ. Um, why I do it, I have to kind of go back to uh, what got me started. I was a youth pastor. Uh, at a church. Uh, best friend of mine that I had at the time was my pastor of the church. Uh, we were buds, you know, I mean, did everything together, traveled around, um, you know, ministering to families. We talked every day. We fished together, just best buds. And uh, I, this is back in 1995, and uh, I had to do a sing for a funeral because I was singing even back then uh, just, uh, doing more country music, stuff like that, had a band and all, but, um, I was doing more country stuff. Well, I had a friend that passed away from our church and we were asked to, uh, to, I was asked to sing for the funeral. So I got there. The church was very small. It wasn't at the funeral home. They, they, the, the man passed away, wanted to be uh, lion stayed at the, at the church. So I had gone to sing. I finished singing. There were so many people and there was nowhere to sit. So I walked out the door to the side and around to the front of the church. Uh, they had a little vestibule there. I, sat, and I walked in the door and there sat my best friend, Chuck, my pastor. And uh, I said, man, I didn't think he was coming today. And he said, Jason, man, I got, got done with my meeting earlier. So I figured I'd, you know, come over here and be for the, fa be here for the family. And I said, man, it's good to see you. Sat down, started talking. Uh, elderly gentleman got up and started preaching the funeral. He got to the end of the sermon and he said the words that everybody's heard before. If you died today, do you know where you'd spend eternity? Now, Chuck immediately looked at me, my pastor, my best friend. He looked at me and said, you ever thought of that? And I said, thought about what? He said, what he just asked? Well, we were talking. I wasn't paying attention. And I said, well, yeah, man, I'm saved, ready to go. You know, knowing that I just lied to him. Well, service ended and uh, we were standing around outside. He said, man, I got a meeting to go to, so I'll, I'll holler at you tomorrow. I said, okay. So he left and I turned around and started talking. Well, a minute or two passed by and I felt a tug on my jacket. I turned around and it was Chuck. And uh, I said, I thought you left. He said, well, I did, but I forgot to tell you. And I said, you forgot to tell me what? He said, what I tell you every time before I leave you or before we hang up the phone. And I knew exactly what he was fixing to say. So I said, all right hit me with it. He said, buddy, I love you. I love you with all my heart. If I don't ever see you again, I see you in heaven one day. I said, okay. I'm telling you, Andy, he told me that every single time we were together. And so anyway, he went and got in his truck and left. And uh, the next morning I had to referee a basketball game. I had gone and done that. I was on my way back home and realized I had a missed call from my wife. So I called home. She said, uh, where are you? And I said, well, I'm almost to the house, about five minutes away. She said, oh, good. She said, they got some stuff going at church. They need your help. I said, okay. So I got home. I walked in the door. And the moment I saw my wife's face, I knew something wasn't right. And I said, Teresa, what, what's going on? And she said, Jason, I, I don't know how to tell you this. And I said, tell me what? She said, Jason, brother Chuck and his son Kevin were in an auto accident this morning. I said, oh, my God, are they okay? Teresa began to cry, and she said, no, Jason, Brother Chuck didn't make it. Now, most people, your mind immediately goes to the family. I got to be there. I got to do. I got to help. But, Andy, I'll be honest with you, man, that family was the furthest thing from my mind because my mind immediately went to a question that my best friend had asked me only hours before. Not days, not weeks, but hours and life and death in that moment, Andy, became very real to me. 
because I realized had that been me in that truck, I'd have split hell wide open because I didn't know Jesus. I knew him in my head. I knew who he was. I knew about him. I knew I could quote scripture with the best of them, but I'd never truly accepted Christ. Well, we had a memorial service for him that night. I went up, I walked in the door and I walked straight down. That church was full. There was somebody on stage talking. And to this day, I can't tell you who it was or what he was saying, because all I could think about was getting to that altar. I went down there and got on my face and man, I'm gonna be honest with you for the first time in my life, I didn't care what nobody thought. I didn't care what nobody said. I went down there just begging Jesus to save me. And I got on my face and I said, God, I know that I have not been living a lie in front of your people. I know I've not been living like I'm supposed to. But God, if you'll forgive me, you'll come into my life and you'll save me. I know I'm not going to be perfect, but God, from this day forward, I'll give you all I got. And, and, and when I got up, Andy, I was different. I was different. I mean, I felt different. I acted different. People even said I looked different, you know, but because the old man had died, and I had put on the new man of Christ. And right after that, shortly after that, uh, some guys in a music group contacted me about singing with them in a quartet, a local quartet. And I thought, you know what? I need to get out of the bars and the countryside and really get focused on what God's got for me. So I told them I would do it. I stayed at the church, continued working for the church, but I started singing gospel music. And one thing led to another, another group, a uh, regional group contacted me. They had lost a, uh, a lead singer and asked me if I would, if I would join them. So I did. And for three years, I did that. And then uh, I was singing with some full-time groups at some concert events and was contacted by uh, a guy named, by the name of Tony Gore. He had a group named Tony Gore and Majesty. And uh, they were the hottest trio in America. I mean, it was just, they were on top of the world, every major concert. Uh, and so I went and interviewed for the job, but it was to sing tenor. And so uh, I got the job and we moved our family to Alabama. Man, we were the first group to go to Ireland and get to sing over there, gospel group. Uh, we've been on Gator videos, concerts all over America. But after five years, Tony decided to start a solo ministry, left me looking for a job. So I moved to North Carolina, started singing with a group called the Down East Boys Quartet. They are still in existence to this day and doing well. I mean, just number one hit after number one hit. Well, I spent 10 years with them. And uh, after 15 years of full-time traveling, leaving my family behind, you know, 200 days a year, I got three boys. One's 26 now, one's 24, and my youngest is about to be 22. And at that time, they were beginning to be in those teenage years making life choices. So I felt like for me, I needed to come off the road and be there for them during that time as a dad. And so uh, I quit the, the group. Uh, I gave them six months to find somebody. Uh, they found somebody within three or four months. And I went to work with Chick-fil-A. Uh, and uh, I was a a friend of mine owned one of the stores there in North Carolina where we were living. And uh, I started working for him and just began to pray and think, you know, we are 12 and a half, 13 hours away from our families. And so if I'm going to work for Chick-fil-A, I can work for Chick-fil-A anywhere. So I talked to my buddy. He called a guy that was that has a franchise here in Mississippi. And he was happened to be opening up a brand new store and needed a manager. And so I interviewed for the job, just like I'm doing with you. It was on, back then it was Skype, not Zoom. Uh, but I did a Skype interview. They hired me uh, on the spot and moved back to Mississippi. While we were here, uh, I began to work through the company thinking, you know, that's the direction God was going to take us and possibly own our own store. But when it came down to time for me to get serious about it, just didn't have a piece. Felt like there was something else God had for us. So my wife and I began to pray. And after about six months, we felt like he was leading us back into the ministry, but this time as a family. And so in May of 2014, Andy, my wife and I sold everything that we own. Now, when I say everything, if it didn't fit on our 36 foot motorhome, we sold it. We put two of the three boys. My oldest was about to go to college. 
We put two of the three boys on there, started traveling. My middle son was running my sound. My youngest one would come up and sing with me some. My wife was handling the books and the financial parts and helping us at the record table. And uh, man, we just began to travel. And God has just continues to open up door after door after door. Uh, this year coming up in 23, if God continues to do what he's doing right now, it'll be the biggest, busiest year I've ever had since I've been doing this in eight and a half years. Um, but we have, I mean, we've put a lot of miles on the, on the road, but in eight and a half years, as of, we had four uh, people get saved this past Sunday at two different concerts. And uh, as of this past week, we are now only two people shy of seeing a thousand people come to know Christ in eight and a half years. That is why I do what I do. There are some of you that's listening to this, and I felt the Lord speaking to me when, when he was talking. There are some of you listening to this, and you've been attending church. You may even sing in church. You may even sing in a group, but you've been playing church. And everybody thinks that you're okay, but new, you know in your heart you're not. I believe, among other things, that this message is for you today, and you are watching this and going, how does he know? Well, the Lord sees right through you right now and says, I've been waiting for you to make a decision. I'm waiting for you to surrender. When surrender is your reasonable service, you can expect great things from God. Yeah, God's not doing things for you right now, or you've been on the edge because you haven't totally surrendered. Now's your time to surrender. Now, if that's you, I want you to get a hold of Jason or get a hold of me. Uh, down below, you've seen his website and you know how to get a hold of him through that. But if that's you and you've accepted Christ or you've now said, I am, I, maybe I, I have accepted Christ, but I haven't lived, I, have, I haven't said I'm all in. If that's you, today's your day. Whenever you're listening to this, today's your day. God's got a, God's got a purpose, a plan, a future, and a hope for you. And there's a reason you tune, tuned in today. Now, you've you've seen the albums on the side, and you've seen his his websites. And I want you to to look at his product and find out where they're singing and 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 support them as much as you much as you can, or much as God has shared with you. But as we leave this interview today. I want you to st take the time and, and pray for Jason and his family. Yeah. God would bless him and continue to, to get two more souls and then onto the next thousand because God's got, uh, God's not done with Jason and his family yet, but they need your prayers. Jason yeah. needs your prayers and you need the practice. So pray that God would, could, would richly bless him in his ministry. Jason, thank you for taking the time and joining us. Today oh, absolutely. Minutes. And I, I want to thank people that are listening uh, to your program. And I hope that maybe something I said triggers something within them. If they would like to contact me, they can. Uh, I have my email is on there on my website. Uh, they're more than welcome to email me and just say, hey, you know, you touched me. I'm also on Facebook. Uh, I have Jason Runnels, just my personal page. I have a fan page. Uh, my wife and I do a, uh, we've created a thing in our travel now. It has nothing to do with our singing. It's just called Runnels on the Road. It's a Facebook channel and we have Instagram as well, but we're just doing that to keep people, you know, in tune with what we're doing. We are completely and solely faith-based. Um, we go places for offerings, uh, you know, on my website, if people, pray for us and then they want to do something there's a place they can donate to our ministry on there um to keep us going and keep us traveling and keep us you know seeing soul saved that's what we do man yeah. but i do want to thank you so much for allowing me to share my story uh with you guys today thank you so much thank you jason and thank you for joining us and if you would keep coming back for some more morning moments <laughs>